Hey, thanks for stopping by. Robert Kofed with Computer Creations. Today, we're going to talk about real basic stuff in Lightburn. I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying, hey, Robert, if you can just show us some basic tips, we'd really appreciate it. There's a lot of people getting into the laser game, and so that's what we're going to cover today. Most of these I use just about on every project that I use. So if you learn these, um, it will speed up your process, I'm sure. Let's jump into Lightburn, and I'll show you what I have. Okay, tip number one, and we're gonna go ahead and use the pencil tool. I don't use the pencil tool a lot, but there are cases when I need it. And so here's how to use it. The first thing you're gonna do is just pick a spot on your workspace and left mouse click. That will start your uh, pencil tool. You can see I can drag this line anywhere I want. If you wanna constrain it to either horizontal or vertical or 45 degree angles, hold down your shift key, and what that'll do is that'll lock it in to either vertically, 45 degree angles, or horizontally. Let's say that you have a line that you need it a very specific length. Just go ahead and keep the shift button held down, left mouse click, and then immediately right mouse click. And now I've locked that segment in so it's nice and horizontal. Let's say that I wanted this line segment to be a certain specific uh, length. I could go ahead and come up here to my uh, select cool tool and select my line and you notice right up here you're going to have a width and a height and this is going to be your friend. You're going to want to know where, where this is because the more you do design the more you're going to want to know about these windows and this is this tells you how big this particular uh, graphic that you've got selected is and right now because it's just a line there is no height but the line itself is 10.36 inches long. Let's say that I wanted it to be a very specific uh, length or width, and let's say it was eight inches. So I'm gonna highlight this, I'm gonna type in eight and hit enter. And now, if I reselect this, just to prove it, I have a, a line segment that is eight inches long. And so that's how you can go ahead and uh, draw out individual lines if you need those. Uh, when using the shift key uh, when you're drawing a line. We'll do it one more time just to make sure you know how to do it. We're going to select the pencil tool. I'm going to left mouse click. I'm going to start it. Let's say I wanted to uh, draw a 45 degree angle. I'm going to hold the shift key down and it'll snap to horizontal, vertical, or 45. I'm going to left mouse button. Then I'm going to immediately right mouse button. And what that does when you hold the right mouse button, it stops the line segment. Otherwise, what will happen is when you left mouse click, it will want to continue. And so that's just a quick way to know how to use the pencil tool. Tip number two, let's go and draw out a square or a rectangle. Remember, if you use your shift key and hold it down, it will draw a perfect square. If you let go of the shift key, it's free form. You can draw whatever kind of rectangular shape you need. If you hold it down, it's a perfect square. If you don't, it's not. And if you're going to draw a rectangle, I just pull something out here. I really don't pay much attention to what size it is because I'm gonna immediately come up here, make sure that my aspect ratio is unlocked and key in the, uh, the, the size that I want. So if it was 12 inches wide by eight inches tall, I just put in 12, I use the tab key and then put in eight inch or eight and tab. And now I have a rectangle that is sized 12 inches wide by eight inches high. Just that quick and easy. We've drawn a rectangle with very little effort. Tip number three, we're gonna stay with this rectangle that we just drew. And if I come up to my selection icon and you notice right here, we've got some options. We can uh, use these little uh, ball, shall we say, to either shear or skew this. But one thing that you don't see is a way to round these corners. Um, if I hold down the control key, you notice that this little blue ball shows up. And at that point, I can take it and now I can round my corners or I can go the opposite way and uh, indent them. Again, you don't see that if you just draw it. Uh, you have to hold down the control key before you see this little blue ball in the corner to be able to either round your corners or if you go up, you can go ahead and do the inverse of rounding those corners. 
Another great handy tip, but if you don't see that little blue ball in the corner, be sure to hold down the control or the command on a Mac. Tip number four, and it has to do with selections. There's a lot of different ways you can make selections in Lightburn, but I'll show you the two that I use the most. Um, and it has to do with generating windows. So if I start up here in my left hand corner, let's say that I wanted to select that uh, black square. I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and I'm gonna make sure that that black square is completely inside the selection window. And you notice even though I'm touching the red octagon, it doesn't select it. And that's because if you start from the left and go to the right, Whatever you want selected has to be completely in that selection window. It works out really well. Uh, on the converse of that, if I start from the right and go to the left, you notice that my selection window is green now and whatever it touches uh, will be selected. So if I touch the blue circle and the red octagon, you notice that these two are going to be selected. So again, it depends on whether you go this way or you go this way depends on what gets selected. I use these two selection features all the time in my designs and it comes in really handy. The only other one I will tell you that I use on occasion is if I hold down the mouse, or excuse me, hold down the shift key and, and select your layer over here, it will select everything on your design space that is that layer color. Another great tip. Tip number five, let's say that you're in absolute coordinates. I don't use absolute coordinates a lot. I use user origin, but let's say that you're used to using absolute coordinates and you always struggle with having to get the, the design on your desktop in sequence with what the actual laser is doing. I'll show you a real easy method to get those two in sync. The first thing you're gonna do is uh, go ahead and put this uh, on the bed of your laser or actually move this to wherever you want it to be uh, on your desktop. Next thing you're gonna do is make sure that your laser is connected. Come up here to the laser position tool, turn it on, zoom in. Let's say that we had a little sign that we wanted to make and we had a piece of wood that was this big. All I'd have to do is come in here, zoom right in here, click that corner, and what's gonna happen is the laser head is gonna go to that part of the bed, then all you've got to do is go ahead and slide your physical piece of wood underneath the laser head, make sure that it's framed up properly, and now your desktop is in sync, sync with what your laser's gonna do. And so this laser position tool is very handy when you're using absolute coordinates. All you've gotta do is just go ahead and put this wherever on the desktop you, you think you want it in your laser, Come over here to your laser position tool, click on it, then zoom in to a known spot, let's say the upper left hand corner, click that and what will happen is the laser head will come and stop where it thinks that top left hand corner is and then all you're gonna do is slide that piece into the laser with the top left hand corner underneath the red light and now your desktop is synced with what the actual laser is doing really easy and quick if you use absolute coordinates. Tip number six, if you need to rotate something, this is the easiest way to do it. Just go ahead and select it and then hit the period key on your keyboard. So every time I hit the period key, it's gonna rotate it. If I want it to be in 45 degree increments, I can hold down the shift key and hit the period key and that's a great, quick, fast, easy way to rotate something. And finally, tip number seven. I use this keystroke all the time, um, and it's for duplicating. You can come up and select something and right mouse click and go down here to duplicate. But I find it much faster if I select something and then hit the Control plus the D key, and that duplicates things as well. And so I can go ahead and get things done much faster, control D, and pretty quick, I've got a bunch of the same things. So you can either right mouse click and select duplicate or hit the control and the letter D key for duplicate. We'll do the same thing and I find it's much faster. I hope these seven tips help you guys out. If you appreciate the content, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, 
Uh, please subscribe. We just passed 30,000 subscribers and I just wanted to thank everyone so much for all their support. I really do appreciate all the things that you provide and the input you give me. And if you've got uh, suggestions on future videos, please put them in the comments. I'd love to see them. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.